In this video, we will be discussing about pole zeros, its plane and stability. What does it mean by poles and zeros? How to plot it in the S-plane and how to interpret the S-plane to determine stability of our closed loop system. So first of all, let's say you have an equation or the transfer function for your closed loop system given by ts so ts equals to numerator and s divided by denominator ds so numerator could be a constant number or it could be a linear equation it could be a quadratic equation and so on denominator could be a linear equation quadratic cubic and so on so poles is the root for the denominator equation or what we call as the characteristic equation so poles are the roots for denominator equation ds zeros are the roots for numerator equation and s so for zeros, if your equation is a constant number, if n s is a constant number or an integer, meaning that the value is 1 until infinity, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100 Meaning it's, a, it's an integer or a constant number That means you don't have any zeros This is a special situation special condition where your numerator and s is just an integer or a constant number either 1 until infinity whatever the value is that means your equation have no zeros value in order to plot your s plane you need to find poles and zeros if there's any zeros could be no zeros or you can have zeros depends on the numerator equation and for denominator you commonly or most of the time you will have your roots for the denominator equation okay it is very uncommon to have a constant denominator it is very uncommon unusual usually you will have roots for denominator equation meaning that you will have poles so these poles and zeros will be plotted on the s plane what is an s plane plane is a special um, graph that we can use to plot poles and zeros and interpret that information to determine stability of our system and this S plane is denoted by x axis equals to sigma and y axis equals to j omega 
the x axis is a real value y axis is the imaginary value because for the zeros and poles sometimes or usually you will also end up with a complex number poles and zeros and this as plane can be used or is used to plot that complex number the roots in the form of a complex number can be plotted on the S plane because the S plane is actually has a real value X exists and an imaginary value Y exists. So if you have complex number for your poles, you can plot it on the S plane. Okay, so this is your S plane. The position of your poles determine the stability of the system your system has three different types of stability the first one stable what does it mean by stable meaning that your response will eventually settle down to a steady state value Second, you can have what we call as marginally stable. To be honest, some control engineers, they define marginally stable as unstable. But in our class, we are going to stick to marginally stable, which means it is stable within that margin. So it looks good. Your output response looks like this for a marginally stable, meaning that the amplitude remains the same from beginning till the end. The amplitude remains the same from beginning till the end. And the third one, we have an unstable system. An unstable system is the system that never settles down meaning that it doesn't have steady state value so this is the response so it will continue to increase its amplitude till infinity or in the real system the amplitude will keep on rising till one point the system will trip or shut down that is an unstable system so s plane can is it's not can s plane is used to determine the category of stability whether it is category one two or three and the position of poles is being used to determine that if you have poles on the left hand plane so this is what we call as the left hand plane for example you have it over here poles when you plot it on the s plane it should be marked by an x or a cross sign that is for poles cross sign so if you have poles on the left hand plane your system is stable okay so your system is stable if you have a complex root if you have a complex root it is usually in a conjugate so it will have same real number but imaginary number has opposite sign so it is a con complex conjugate so if it's again lies in the left hand plane then your system is 
stable. Okay, let's say your system has a pole on the right hand side. So the system has one pole on the right hand side. Whenever you have one or more poles on the right hand side or the right, on the right hand plane, your system will be unstable. When you have one or more poles on the right hand plane, your system will be unstable. Okay, so when would the system be marginally stable? That is, if you have poles on the imaginary axis. So when you have poles just on the imaginary axis, then your system will be marginally stable. So those are the three conditions for stability that can be determined by the position of poles on the S-plate. Next, we're going to look at zeros, how to put zeros on the S-plate. So, zeros is marked by a circle on your S-plate. It is denoted by a circle sign so it can be anywhere on the S plate so in order for us to determine stability we focus more on the post position the zeros position effects can be neglected you can when you put it in the S plane, even though it is on the right hand plane, it has very minimal effects to the stability. Hence, we neglect it. So we focus more on the position of the pose. Okay, so next one, we're going to look at example of a closed loop system and we're going to determine the stability of the system. Example so We have a simple closed loop system with a GS equals to 1 over S squared plus 3S plus 1 So this is your closed loop simple unity feedback closed loop system. So we want to determine the stability of this system. Your first step is you need to find the transfer function for the closed loop system. So TS equals to GS over 1 plus HS GS. So since it is a unity feedback system, it means that HS equals to 1. So your equation will become GS over 1 plus GS. Because HS equals to 1 in a unity feedback system. Okay, so let's find the transfer function for the closed loop system so it is 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 1 you will get 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 1 divided by s squared plus 3s plus 1 plus 1 divided by s squared plus 3s plus 1 so you can cancel off the denominator 
of both and you will end up with a transfer function of ts equals to 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. In this case, your numerator is a constant. As I mentioned, if you have a constant numerator, you don't have any zeros. And then you have a characteristics equation or what we call as the denominator equation in a quadratic form s squared plus 3s plus 2 so you will have poles so you got to find the roots for the denominator so s squared plus 3s plus 2 equals to zero in order to find the roots so try to factorize it you can use your calculator but this one is a simple example so if you factorize it you will get s plus 2 times s plus 1 equals to zero so you will get s equals to minus 2 and s equals to minus 1 so these are the roots for the denominator equation or the characteristic equation so these two are your poles. So now that you have your poles, we can actually plot it on the S plane. X axis is the real value. Y axis is the imaginary value. So looking at your roots, both of it are real values only. It's not complex number. So you can just plot it, minus 1, minus 2. So you have to interpret this information since both of the, both of the poles on the left hand plane, it means that the system is stable. Because the poles are all on the left hand plane, so the system is stable. So your system would have a stable output response that may look like this. Because it is stable, it will settle down to a fixed value. So this is an example on how you want to do stability analysis first step find the transfer function for the closed loop system second find the find the roots for the numerator equation if any find the roots for the denominator equation if you have roots for the numerator equation those are your zeros if you have roots for the denominator equation those are your poles when you have gotten those values poles and zeros you can plot it in the s plane and then next determine stability by looking at the position of the poles if they're on the left hand plane your system is stable